morning children welcome once again to sunday school let us pray shall we father we thank you for bringing us to sunday school once again thank you god for you are the only living true god be with us as we learn these lessons write them in the fleshy table of our hearts and we will praise you forevermore for we pray in jesus name amen we shall listen to our friend reciting the memory verse. The God that answers by fire, let him be God. First Kings chapter 18 verse 24. Well done. God bless you. Our topic this today is the true God answers. Our Bible text is taken from 1 Kings 18 verses 17 to 46. We will read the selected verses, verses 17, verses 24, and verse 39. Shall we take our Bibles and read with me? 1 Kings 18 verse 17. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? 24. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. Verse 39. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. And they said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. We put our Bible on the side for now. Children, I've got this figure with me. Can you see it? Can I talk to this figure? The bed of course can i talk to it and it will talk back to me no can i pray to it and it will answer my prayers no way today we are learning about certain people in israel who worshipped a figure called baal and God was not happy with what they did. So, we are learning that in Israel, at that time, there was no rain for three years. And God knew about that. And God sent a prophet Elijah. Elijah was sent to meet King Ahab at the time. God had planned something special. People in Israel were worshipping an item called Baal. Children, we don't want to do that. Remember, a figure can be anything which you worship, which you keep so dearly and you forget God. You value it. We don't want to do that. It can be your toy. You want your toy always. You forget about doing your memory verse. You forget about praising God. No, we don't want to do that. It could be your clothes. It could be your kitty bank. Anything which you give more attention and adore it above God, God does not want us to do that. So these people were worshipping Baal, a cow. And God sent Elijah to meet the king at the time. And when King Ahab. saw Elijah, he was very angry. He said, you are the one who has caused the, the rains not to fall all these three years. And Elijah said to him, no, God is not happy. That you are not worshipping him. 
we are worshiping a figure by so god is not happy with that that's why there is no rain king hahab was so angry about that and said what shall we do then god had spoken to elijah about this plan that he should go with the prophets of Baal to Mount Carmel and there they were going to build an altar and they would make a sacrifice. God will show them who they are supposed to worship because these people were worshipping Baal. At the same time, they did believe in God and God was not happy with that. We need to worship only true God. A one, there is only one true God. So off they went to Mount Carmel. The prophets of Baal and Elijah. And they were given instructions that they should build an altar. And they should not put any fire. They should pray to their God Baal. Who should bring fire from heaven. So that was done. They built that altar. As you can see. And they prayed to their God Baal. Morning, afternoon, evening. They cried, they moaned, nothing happened. Then it was the turn for Elijah to make a sacrifice. Elijah built an altar made of 12 stones. He then poured water over the wood on the altar and it was wet. He then prayed to God to ask God to send fire from heaven. Guess what happened? Our living God did send fire from heaven. It rained fire on Elijah's altar. And the worshippers of Paul were afraid. They realized that it is only one true God we should worship. Today, God is teaching us that we need to worship him. We need to obey him. We need to believe in him. We serve the miracle working God. Children, we can only worship God if our sins are washed away. So today we want to ask God to wash those naughty things from our heart. So that when we pray to him, miracles will happen. God will answer our prayers. God will heal us when we are sick. God will protect us because he is a living God. Our statement reads, I worship a living God. May God help you as you grow up that you know that there is only one true God whom you have to worship. And if you take that in your heart, worship God all the time, guess what will happen at the end of your life? He will take you to heaven. How wonderful is that? God will help us. That is the end of our lesson. Our activities for ages 2 to 5, Look at the things in the picture below. In the circles, draw a smiling face if rain is good for them. Draw a sad face if they don't want rain right now. Ages 6 to 8, find the words in the picture. Write each word in the box with a matching number. Our next week's lesson is lesson 10C. Titled, Elijah Saw It Happen.
that is the end of our lesson bye <laughs>Good morning once again boys and girls and you're all welcome once again to the answer class for this morning. Today we are continuing with our new series of lessons with the theme pardoned, prepared and powerful. And this week's lesson, lesson 93 is titled The Solution. And in my opinion it's a very very exciting lesson um given the fact that we're also continuing from last week's lesson. So stick around and find out what the solution is going to be but before we get into the lesson i just want us to watch something together for a few seconds mm what do we have here some math problems i know some of you are already attempting to get the solution some maybe have a bit of anxiety from school and remembering how challenging these might be well each and every single one of these has a solution and today we're also learning about a solution but a different type of solution so stick around and find out more well we're going to take a few moments to read our text and search the scriptures and see what the word of god says about what we're learning about today we shall read a few selected verses from our text which is romans chapter 5 we shall read from verse 15 but not as the offense so also is the free gift for if through the offense of one many be dead much more the grace of god and the gift by grace which is by one man jesus christ hath abounded unto many shall read verse 18 therefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life for as by one by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous in order for us to be able to understand what the solution is and appreciate it even more i strongly believe that it's quite important for us to look back at last week's lesson which was titled the problem or the adamic nature and in this in this lesson we saw god give adam and eve a very clear instruction in the garden of eden and this instruction was that they could eat of any fruit from any of the trees except from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil but after the serpent deceived them guess what adam and eve did they ate of that fruit and god was very angry with them because now they knew good and evil and God said to them thou shall surely die but did Adam and Eve die no but they died spiritually their disobedience severed the relationship between God and man it separated God from man and this was a very 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 disappointing thing for humanity God was so upset he cursed the earth and then he chased Adam and Eve out of the garden you know and the problem was that adam and eve brought sin into the world sin then became that problem that god hated so much to the point that he took drastic measures but as much as god hated sin god loved us more his undying love for us saw that god found a solution to 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 to, to reconcile us back and in this solution god sent his only begotten son jesus christ to come and redeem us and some of you might be wondering who redeem what does that word even mean you know i know some of you might have not come across it so i'll, I'll give you a few moments wherever you're watching from just to to think what the word redeem means to you before we we we, we define it together the word redeem means to buy back to repurchase or to free from the bondage of sin which really describes Jesus Christ perfectly he came so that he could be the solution to the problem of sin think about it isn't that wonderful god's love for us that he sacrificed his own son so that he could reconcile us back to him so that we we would not be separated from god forever 
but instead God found a plan for us to go back to him, to be reconciled back to him through Jesus Christ. Some of you might be wondering, who then can be redeemed? The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and have come sh short of the glory of the earth. Some of you might be wondering, who then can be redeemed? Well, the Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible doesn't say some, it says all have sinned. And this really shows that anyone born of woman has that Adamic nature. And just to remind each other, just think of it this way. Who taught babies how to throw tantrums? When babies get upset and they try to slap the mom or they try to kick, who taught them how to do that? No one. It's just in them. It's how they are born. It's just that Adamic nature that is just manifesting itself physically. And this is why it's important for us to seek Christ. This is why it's important for us to, to have our sins forgiven, to seek this solution to, 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 to that sin problem. And... You know, you might be wondering, oh, I've been a well-behaved kid. I don't cheat. I don't lie. I don't steal. I, I don't engage myself in immoral acts. That's, that's wonderful. But that doesn't absolve you of sin. Whether you like it or not, you, you are still prone to committing sin because you've not yet been cleansed. You've not yet been redeemed. So it's not by our good deeds that we'll be able to, to be sin free it's not by our compassion it's not about how nice we are to to our fellow man that will be free of sin but the only solution is Christ Jesus and real salvation and just to encourage each other in the word of the Lord in 1 Peter 1 verses 18 to 19 we read earlier on that we are not redeemed by corruptible things such as silver or gold which just shows to which just goes to show that money doesn't matter when it comes to, to this redemption, to this solution. You know, you might be thinking, oh, I don't have money. Jesus doesn't care if you have money or not. He doesn't even care, when, you know, whether you're black or white, which country you come from, whether you're tall or short. Jesus doesn't care. He doesn't care the number of bad things you've done, how bad you've been. Jesus doesn't care. He wants you as you are. He's already paid the price. Think about it. Isn't this a wonderful thing to, to, to have someone love you so much that you don't have to do anything but to believe, to accept, to, to want to be saved? This morning, ask yourself, if you're not saved, do you really want to be saved? And if you're not saved, why are you not saved? What's stopping you? You know, as young people, we think we have so much time, but who told you that you'll be here tomorrow? who told you that you'll be here the day after, I'd say take advantage of the solution. Take advantage of the blood of Christ today while it's still available and you see what God will do in your life. All it takes is for you to say yes this morning and, and, and God will turn around your life for good. I just want to challenge you this morning to put everything that we've learned, everything we've discussed, put it into practice. You know, the Bible says if we know to do good and we don't, we're already committing sin. You know, and today we've learned a good thing. Why should we not put it into practice? I want to challenge you, put everything we've learned into practice today and see what the Lord will do. Anyways, we've come to the end of our lesson. I know you guys would have loved to be here much longer, but we'll be back again next week with another lesson. But before... We round up, let us just commit the lesson to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today's lesson. Thank you for teaching us this lesson yourself. And we believe that you've planted this lesson firm, deep in our hearts. We pray, O oh Lord, that you don't allow the devil to cheat us out of this lesson and help us to follow through and press on and find the solution to find you, to find real salvation through you. We pray that you bless everyone, you bless, you bless the rest of the services today. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Just a reminder to do this week's lesson activity. 
um, where you will need to read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22 and fill in the missing words. Also, don't forget to do the stack a word. Have fun. Next week, we'll be studying lesson 94 titled Convinced of Sin. I do hope you take time to study this lesson and God bless you all and have a wonderful Sunday.